Hi friends, welcome to the NPTEL course Strategy and Technology, a Practical Primer. We are in week 9 with the theme of Technology as Strategic Driver. In this week's lecture, the 43rd in this series, we will focus on technology in the prism of five forces. We have seen the five forces theory in terms of competitive strategy for the firm as an overall proposition. We have also seen that technology and science determine together how the firms can be differentially competitive in terms of innovation, differentiation and followership. Our last three lectures were focused on these three aspects. We also had a case study of micro LED demonstrating how innovation, differentiation and followership could work in sequence as well as in parallel. Although inventions are made at some points of time, the actual realization in the mainstream commercialization takes place much later. Reverting to this lecture's focus, competitive technology forces are powerful. These are five. They relate to functionalities, materials, processes, operating system and ecosystem. Just as we had three generic competitive strategies for the five industrial forces, these technology forces can also have three generic technology strategies. These are functional technology, experience technology and life technology. Functional technology focuses on select competitive forces. Experience technology focuses on all the five forces while life technology focuses on elevating human life. This technology focused competitive strategy, which is again an original presentation that is being shared with you as part of the NPT lectures, enables superior business performance and it is based on direct correlation between technological competencies and product competencies. This unique framework for companies to view technology and strategies in multiple ways is one more furtherance of the role of technology in competitive strategy. We have seen how innovators, differentiators and even improvers of follower category can make substantial improvement into the quality of life through the products and services that are offered. Technology brings new products and processes to fruition, creating markets and jobs, creating wealth for the nation. Technology, however, creates and drives competitive forces as well. Those firms which are technologically innovative and competitive outsmart others. Conversely, firms which are technologically obsolete and uncompetitive damage their own sustenance. Technologically innovative firms create wealth, whereas technologically deficient firms erode and destroy wealth. Firms should therefore appreciate technology in terms of various possibilities and the potential impact on competitive strategies. Let us look at the five forces in technology prism. When we look at the forces in terms of the fundamental driver of technology rather than just the competitive force itself, we will be able to understand the impact of technology in a much better and granulated fashion. For example, the weakness or strength of suppliers is driven by their technology, not by their management. Although management has some impact, it is the technology that drives the competitive force of suppliers. Outwardly, each of the five competitive forces reflects a management strategy deployed in different ways by different firms. But we are not to be lulled into thinking that management is what competitive force is about. As considered in the earlier lectures, in reality, each competitive force is determined, influenced or calibrated by technology in different forms. Technology as a competitive force does not take shape merely by knowledge levels, laboratory infrastructure, organization, culture, etc. There is something more than this. It is an alchemy. These are general variables that influence not only technology. They also influence other professional dimensions and even management and leadership in the overall. We have to therefore have a strategy which is focused only on technology and the forces that technology could generate for a firm. What are these five forces of technology? New technology makes existing mature technology obsolete. And how does that happen? Because the new technology has a competitive force 
which overrides the weak power weak capability of the previous technology these five forces are influenced by new technology these help a firm develop new products and services that make the existing products and services obsolete the model of five technology forces which i propose is as follows one power of functionalities two power of materials three power of process four the power of operating system and five the power of supportive ecosystem each of the five forces individually and all the forces collectively act on each of the competitive forces that we have discussed earlier that is the threat of the new entrants the threat of the substitute products the bargaining power of suppliers the bargaining power of buyers and the industry rivalry all these five are impacted by the five forces of technology which i have listed here in a product driven firm technology works as an underlying enabler and also as a visible result i'll summarize this for you the enablers are science and technology levels that is the competencies the intellectual property levels etc investment levels that is the financial resources that are deployed on science and technology and the r&d commitment that is the the level to which investments can go the number of scientists and technologists that the company would like to have if you do these things correctly you will have results and those results are in terms of product functionalities materials and components manufacturing process operating systems and ecosystems each firm must try to understand where and how it could be positioned with respect to each of the expected results or goals technology enablers will need to be deployed accordingly we should never put the cart before the horse that is we should not put the enablers first without thinking of the results we are trying to see instead of that we should have the results as goals and then make the enablers available the only exception could be when you do fundamental research that is when you seek knowledge for knowledge sake so that at some point of time in future that knowledge becomes available one of the three strategies technology strategies that is that would be discussed here talks about those kinds of investments life technology will cover those kinds of aspects let us look at product functionality what does it mean the power of new functionalities clearly is the essence of new product and market development you will buy a new product not just for replacement of the old product with the same function you anticipate that you would be able to get something different when you buy a new automobile you would like to have better uh, aesthetics better driving performance more safety features less emission and so on so you want new functionalities with every purchase you make the typical 2 by 2 matrix that analyzes an issue in terms of two dimension helps us for example a business can be analyzed in terms of the two basic dimensions of revenue and profit or return and investment or market share and profit share and so on we have also seen how product specialization and marketing integration could be one set of uh, aspects similarly manufacturing diversity and product specialization could be one dimension and it goes on we have to choose the dimensions which are appropriate for our analytical needs but we can apply this above approach to product functionality there are two dimensions for product functionality when you enhance your existing technology you will get better product functionality or when you integrate new technologies you will get product functionality so if you draw a 2 by 2 matrix of enhancement of existing technologies and integration of new technologies you will get four quadrants which will demonstrate where your product could be positioned a smartphone which provides virtual reality experience using a virtual reality headset is an extended package of the smartphone but then it is like having a scuba diving equipment on the other hand if the smartphone display itself can be brought as close as possible to virtual reality experience that is you don't have to attach anything additionally and it doesn't make you feel out of the world person then it becomes an integrated product product functionality takes a quantum jump with this kind of development the design philosophy as it works through the two dimensional product functionality matrix generates unique technological competitive forces and they can be used 
to raise or overcome competitive barriers. Materials and components is one of the other aspects of the results that could happen due to technological deployment. They play a significant role in determining the efficiency, durability, reliability, maintainability and elegance of a product, be it industrial or consumer. There is a difference between uh, an aluminium product and a plastic product. There is a difference between an aluminium product and a steel product because they have their own characteristics of materials. And what happens internally even, looks even more abstract but very much appropriate to influence the overall product performance. In this case, the case study which we had on micro LED becomes very relevant. But before that, the extent to which a firm understands the material and component technology will determine if the firm would be able to synergize the forces of materials with that of product functionality. That is, although the component industry is organized separately, we should not think that we have nothing to do with the materials that are being used. The end product form must be the harbinger of change, asking the component makers to come up with new materials. Similarly, the component industry has the responsibility and accountability to use new materials so that the component can be much better. To the extent that a material or a component is also a product, the five competitive technological forces will be relevant to the material and component forms as well. So it's a cascade of the technological forces from the end product to the material component to the material system. As I said, the micro LED case covered a significant portion of how internal components can alter the visible appearance as well as the performance of a product. The evolution of flat panel televisions overriding the picture tube is a classic example. Later, we had the evolution of flat panel screens themselves in terms of LCD, plasma, LED, OLED screens and now we have micro LED screens. We have seen the succession as shown in the arrow diagram on the right side. Two cars can be equally well designed in terms of traction that is power and torque. But if one is a solar powered hybrid due to the solar overwrap materials instead of conventional sheet steel, clearly the latter would be a more differentiated car. Materials determine these days the level of technological progress a product can achieve. Then we have manufacturing process. We spoke about aluminium, but there is a difference between plain aluminium and burnished al aluminium. Similarly, there is a difference between steel and coated steel sheet. The relationship between product industry and manufacturing equipment industry is somehow less integrated than what exists between the product industry and the materials stroke component industry. Relatively speaking, this is a bit surprising, but that is the fact of the life. Machine tools are designed and developed independently, imagining a broad purpose. Similarly, in pharmaceutical industry, the fill finish equipment for vials are also developed independently without thinking of how the commercialization of those machines will take place in terms of the throughput of the products. But again, using the two dimension approach, Every manufacturing process will have two objectives. One, objectives of better tolerances and higher productivity, which is the enhancement of the manufacturing capacity productivity. Or it will have the capability of manufacturing equipment itself completely changed. That is, that is it could be so digitally enabled that the entire capability spectrum would undergo bigger change. Automobile firms which have different domain engineers such as machine tool, electronics and instrumentation technologies besides co-mechanical and automobile engineering would be working much superior compared to other automobile firms which only focus on mechanical engineers. Similarly, if pharmaceutical firms employ a wide spectrum of engineers and scientists, chemical engineers, instrumentation engineers and pharmaceutical scientists such firms can generate and harness the competitive manufacturing technology force as a competitive advantage because in pharma it is chemistry plus chemical engineering along with various other instrumentation controls, safety parameters that work for the superiority. 
Even this may provide operating efficiency and competitive advantage in the normal course. But if the manufacturing process itself is understood and deployed as one of the five important competitive technological processes, the outcomes would be significantly superior. That is, you reverse engineer machine tool development or fill finish development from the products that are going to be evolved in future. Next, the operating system. Operating system is like the brain of the product. It is the unique aspect of any product in the contemporary digital world. Earlier, we were never thinking of operating system as something which is extremely different and differentiated from a component. But the whole concept of software came in as Microsoft started bringing in the desktop operating systems. From that time, OS became one of the ingredients of development of all devices, more so any device that is run by software and digital technologies. Hardware requires the operating system to work to the fullest capacity. We all understand that Apple phones are the best mainly because there is a seamless integration and in hardware and software. Similarly, cameras in smartphones work not merely because of the sensor capabilities, not merely because of the megapixels, but also because of the software that works to make the images rendered much more beautifully and much more realistically. It is not that operating system never existed. Any time and every time a device was there, there was a kind of uh, operating system. These were essentially in terms of mechanical toggles, electronic switches, programming logic controls, and finally con computer controls. These belong to two or three eras of machine tools. And through these, there was an effort to govern the functioning of a product in that era too. However, structuring a product uniquely around an operating system and developing operating systems to govern products is the new reality of the contemporary digital world. You cannot develop a new digital watch if you are not having an appropriate watch system, watch operating system. This trend is unlikely to stop here. Strides in artificial intelligence and machine learning are likely to develop products that are not merely code controlled but are also speech responsive. They will be reactive to gesture. They will be guided by thoughts. They will be managed by intents and even they will be intelligent eventually mimicking the human brain. So let's remember this. The products of the future will not merely be code controlled but will also be speech responsive gesture reactive, thought guided, intent managed and even intelligent eventually mimicking the human brain. That's where the technology would take us to. Customized operating systems would be the next frontier for managing the competitive technology force of operating system. The traditional technology relationships had been quite simple. A firm and its customer are connected by a product. The firm required the business and the customer required the service. But today, the overall ecosystem matters a lot. We have technology networks on one side, we have social networks on the other side. Technology networks are connected with the product, social networks are connected with the customer or vice versa. Product and customer are together connected in terms of the experience uh, box. Customers need product performance with unique experience. All of this is one integrated ecosystem and it is very difficult to say where the trigger starts to occur. This system of technology driven ecosystem is somewhat akin to a system of technology democracy wherein independent technologies motivate themselves to develop a host of applications for what they believe or virtuous products thus creating a total ecosystem. There has been a democratization of technology that has been happening over time in the software industry through Linux kind of open source products and even in today's uh, highly sophisticated artificial intelligence and machine learning era we have got uh, portals and sites which provide ready-made uh, solutions. The skill lies in choosing the solution and adapting it to your needs. So an ecosystem is getting developed and several other ecosystems are available as open source items which can be integrated 
and of course those if those ecosystems also have proprietary technologies this integration will lead to a product that is technologically superior so the extent of the ecosystem or the lack of it would be a significant competitive technology force positive or negative as the case may be the firms must therefore focus on building a supportive network in the last lecture i talked about certain events certain initiatives occurring far ahead of time as people believed and failing i explained that it is not because those initiatives were far ahead of time whoever started those initiatives didn't look at the generation of the total ecosystem that the initiative required but today when we think of new initiatives we think of total ecosystem to develop which is one of the reasons again when IIT Madras just announced a new MTech program for uh, electric vehicles. Eight departments are coming together to develop an integrated program which will meet all the multifarious requirements of electric vehicle development. So people are understanding, people are also implementing the need for interfunctional, intra-technological collaboration. Let's look at the generic technology strategies from now onwards. We discussed earlier that the five technology forces correspond to the five competitive forces we discussed in the context of the overall industry. That discussion also had three generic competitive strategies, cost leadership, technology and niche. So far we have discussed five technology forces in their own right. Now we need to formulate three generic technology strategies which will reflect the kind of generic approach technologies leaders must take to deploying technology. These three generic technologies are functional technology strategy, experience technology strategy and life technology strategy. Whenever you look at the technology that is being adopted or executed by different companies, you will find that they would be adopting one of these three technology strategies as the driving force. The functional technology strategy provides functional efficiencies. The performance gets better. The looks get better. The experience technology strategy ensures superiority on all attributes and in addition provides an experience that is superior to the previous experience of the previous product. And life technology strategy changes the industry fundamentally because it changes life fundamentally. These generic technology strategies should not be seen as mere mirror images of generic competitive strategies. For example, we can't believe that technological productivity corresponds to cost leadership, technological innovation corresponds to differentiation, and niche in technology corresponds to niche in business. No, it is not so. The approach of trying to relate one to the other is not going to offer anything new. Instead, when we look at each of these functional technology strategies in individual contribution, you will get a much better picture of how the generic technology strategies would work for you. So we have to postulate what each of these three generic technology strategies can do and how firms can rely upon those competitive technology forces as well as the three generic technology strategies so that competitive strategy can be wholesome. Let's look at two ways of functional technology strategy panning out. We try to get functionalities that are essential to deliver performance that we think the users require. And those functionalities depend on the essential purpose of the product and they focus only on some of the five competitive technology forces and not on. When you look at a on-ground pump, that is a motor pump which is on the ground, the focus is on competitive performance metrics such as high throw of the water and low noise because it is on the ambient situation. If you look at a water submersible pump, the focus is on failure proof performance by the pump under the rigorous hydraulic water conditions for which it is intended. So the enablement of the operating performance is quite different in for both these products. But by focusing on functional technologies, firms are likely but not necessarily be able to optimize on investments and cost leadership. Okay, you would get these functionalities, but, does, but that doesn't mean that the product as a whole is completely optimized. 
as i said these are not the same as generic strategies let's take one example in the case of generic cost leadership strategy the starting objectives as well as the finishing objectives would focus only on cost competitiveness and technological choices will be directed towards that on the other hand when you have functional technology strategy we focus on getting advanced technologies with high investments and high product costs that is you don't go lean just because you want better functionalities for cost leadership so there is a world of difference between getting performance through cost leadership strategy and functional technology strategy functional technology strategy doesn't mean immediate technological productivity it is a futuristic technological productivity firms following cost leadership stay focused in terms of technology development and investment commitment on an incremental basis and also on a lean basis whereas companies which are following the generic functional technology strategy are clear about the futuristic customer and product needs and they want to do that with top flight technologies for the chosen dimensions technology strategy focuses on customer needs and experiences in the target market segments while generic strategy positions the firm to win on an optimal investment revenue and profit relationship so the technology is the driver here and that technology can get get better functionality is the driver whereas here the driver is that technology has to be lean operations have to be lean so that cost is reduced for the customer so just because technology provides productivity it cannot be seen as corresponding to cost leadership it could be one of the ways in which cost leadership can be achieved but cost leadership cannot define functional technology strategy let us look at experience technology strategy the generic experience technology strategy aims at providing the broadest set of users with the total high end product performance complete with product elegance once upon a time microsoft was not known for the devices both in terms of performance and in terms of quality in fact it was one of the earliest companies to have come up with the tablet but because of these issues of both elegance and performance and the matching of the hardware and software the tablet didn't take off and that apple came up with the right kind of tablet because of the experience it provided apart from the functionality is now history so when you look at experience technology strategy the components are required in terms of these one state of the art materials you should have a full fledged laptop capability and it delivered high speed processor options were provided manufacturing processes were for better tolerances and better elegance full function latest generation windows operating systems were provided in those tablet devices high ram options and usb compatibility supportive technology ecosystem ability to run the fully proven and vastly adapted the suite of office providing the ease and elegance of a media friendly tablet and invoking all the five technology forces in terms of high end functionality which is the reason why microsoft succeeded with surface when it could not succeed with other devices although microsoft was not earlier appreciated for its device capabilities this surface series has provided microsoft with a vast amount of goodwill in respect of what it could do in the device area another example we need to go beyond the known essential purpose of a product to be able to deliver the true experience strategy in actual practice firms which follow experience technology strategy are required to do three things they should have scientists and technologists from multiple domains to ensure the tightest and an alchemic technology networking so that there would be the fastest go to market and with the most appropriate product i have already referred to the need for an electric vehicle education system to have multiple domains contributing to the theory and practice those who follow experience technology strategy have to invest aggressively to achieve the technology goals because the technology is not the mundane technology and they have to commit large investments to cover multiple market segments it is not just the investment per se it is the coverage of investment in terms of multiple market segments so that there could be pan market domination so investment intensity will be paid back 
by the high market share, high market spread and high profitability. Experience technology again is not just differentiation, it is more expansive than differentiation. Experience technology tries to achieve superiority on all the dimensions and not just one or two. Differentiation by and large is content with one or two dimensions. Is it innovation? Yes, it is an innovation of sorts because it brings out something new to be experienced. But it is not fundamentally innovation either because it is taking a product to a new level of experience and together with functionality but is not dramatically altering how life will be governed with that product. So this is the second step of experience technology strategy. Now we come to the life technology strategy which is going to completely redefine how we live our life. In contrast to both the functional technology and experience technology strategies, life technology strategy seeks to extend the horizons of human life through areas of operation. Firms committed to technology strategy of life are typically passionate about the experimental leadership which we discussed in an earlier lecture. And again, life technology strategy doesn't mean only biology. All efforts to redefine and reposition life in time and space qualify for this strategy. The strides that are being made in understanding human biology and addressing the disease, aging and other phenomena are driven by a quest for better life. By understanding the DNA of each individual and personalizing medicine, life technology strategy is proving itself to be of immense benefit. Similarly, by having the ability to edit the genes that are deficient or that are aberrant, we are also demonstrating how we can alter the life. Similarly, when you do a combination of mechanical, digital and biological systems to drive our life in a better fashion, then you are creating life technology strategy. Ice, as we know, cannot be synthetically made. But if you are able to make the ice through bringing together all these technologies, then you have extended the life. Similarly, regenerative medicine, ability to grow your own uh, organs, ability to have your own immunity, all of these things are important. Chip makers and supercomputer makers who can exponentially increase processing power, nanotechnology developers, artificial intelligence and genomics companies and other engineering companies have life technology strategies as their ultimate goals. When you have audio systems that capture, process and deliver real, pure, rich and deep sound and transportation systems that run on rooftop so solar panels, hybrid motors and electric drives are also in the life technology game, though not to the extent of altering human life directly. Firms committed to life technology strategy are very passionate about experimentation as a fundamental driver. It is not that they will say that I need this product immediately to make this happen. They will think about experimentation as the first step in defining what kind of life technology goals and life technology strategies the company should have. The decision and determination of Amgen to specialize in new biological drugs when large molecule drugs dominant represented a nascent life technology strategy. It is an example, by no means the first one. Before Ramjan came on to scene, there was not even a single biological drug which was in the mainstream in terms of treating diseases and certain diseases were considered to be out of bounds for chemically synthesis drugs because they cannot act on the complex uh, pathways that are involved in such conditions, for example, arthritis, for example, autoimmune diseases. All those were getting to be tackled with Amgen's new biological drugs. So it is a life technology strategy that pioneered Amgen, later Genentech and then host of companies. But life technology strategy was there when Edward Jenner and Louis Pasteur in 1796 and 1885 respectively laid the foundations of modern vaccination. The life technology strategy was there. Similarly, the practices that existed even in earlier centuries in India and other Asian countries ensured life technology development. Therefore, life technology strategies are not a modern day management construct. They had been an integral part of intellectual development from the early ages. Life technology is not reactive to market research. On the other hand, it responds to inner technology voices 
that require products to meet human sensory and life needs. That inner technology voice of a brilliant creative mind is the one which drives strides in life technology. Life technology strategy requires that firms invest in fundamental sciences and technologies to achieve increasing level of perfection. Firms typically would be required to commit resources to develop laboratories of the future, laboratories of fundamental research and it could be done organically or through strategic alliances. Collaborations with universities and research laboratories are the very impactful means to achieve this kind of life technology strategy. Firms however need to commit large investments in narrow market segments which could be risky but offer premium pricing and returns. At this point of time I want to synthesize whatever we have been discussing in terms of forces and strategies. We have discussed earlier the five competitive forces and the generic strategies related to that. These are threat of new entrants, bargaining power of suppliers, threat of substitute products and bargaining power of buyers and extent of industry rivalry as far as the five competitive forces are concerned. The generic competitive strategies that are recommended to be adopted by firms are cost leadership, differentiation and niche or focus. As far as the technology forces that I have proposed in this lecture, we have again five of them. Power of functionalities, power of materials, power of process, power of operating system and the power of supportive ecosystem. The suggested generic technology strategies are functional technology, experience technology, life technology. So we can see the entire methodology of competitive forces and competitive strategies in terms of two levels. One at an industry level, at an overall strategic framework level, what the company would like to do in an industry to be superior to other firms. That is one aspect. The other aspect is how do we develop and deploy technology to be able to achieve what we want to achieve. So the fundamental driver will be the technology framework and these five forces individually and the 10 forces collectively will shape the industry structure and firm strategy. That is each of the five forces that are involved in the competitive strategy framework and the technology strategy framework together those 10 forces and the three generic competitive strategies and three generic technology strategies will drive the evolution of a firm in an industry and of course the evolution of the industry itself and that combination has to be a real good alchemy then only society and the nation will benefit through high class industrial development. Now let's look at a case. We have talked about life changing life technology. When a company devotes itself to nothing but robots and robotics, it is in the aspiration zone of life changing. Boston Dynamics is a company that is dedicated to robotics. It was founded in 1992 but has been acquired by Alphabet first, next Hyundai and Tesla in quick succession. It is headquartered in the United States with a revenue of $52 million. Like all startups, the Revenue level is low, but the market capitalization is $1.1 billion and it manufactures all types of robots. This is the fascinating array of robots developed by Boston Dynamics. It developed the dynamically stable quadruped military robot Big Dog in 2005 along with the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratory and the Harvard University Concord Field Station. The project was discontinued in 2015 as it was deemed to be too noisy to be in combat. So every development has to fulfill a whole spectrum of objectives. Even if one objective is not fulfilled, then the project cannot go forward. Then another gadget was developed, not a gadget, robot. It is a four-footed uh, robot that gallops at 28 miles per hour, which is substantial for a robot. Developed by DAPA by Boston Dynamics for research, Little Dog is a small quadruped robot which has four legs, each powered by three electric motors. You can see the visualization that is happening. Boston Dynamics is mimicking life 
mostly animal life to start with to be able to get into this robotic field which is like living organisms pet one is the first anthropomorphic robot developed by boston dynamics that moves like a real person the militarized version of big dog the ls3 is also known as the alpha dog it can operate in hot cold wet and dirty environments the agile anthropomorphic robot atlas is a six foot bipedal humanoid robot earlier called petman as you have seen and that has been designed for a variety of search and rescue tasks weighing only 25 kilos four legged canine inspired spot was revealed on june 23 2016 it is the quietest of all robots developed by boston dynamics handle is a research robot with two flexible legs on wheels and two hands for manipulating or carrying objects it can stand 6.5 feet tall travel at 9 miles per hour and jump 4 feet correspondingly 2 meters tall 14 kilometers per hour and 1.2 meters height when you see these products they may look little uh, like contraptions they may look in some cases ugly as well but these are definitive steps that are being taken by a company to use all engineering disciplines to develop a product that will mimic life therefore it is life technology strategy which we have discussed spot is the boston dynamics first major robot to be released into the wild that is it is compatible with the rest of the world and they see this as the new platform for developers it has four articulated legs an injection molded hard plastic shell and just enough functionality to be useful and it will be able to see this product in unknown environments and extreme circumstances this was supposed to be more mechanical mule than a dog however it looks also like to be a companion for the soldier in terms of utility its utility spectrum has been increasing it has been deployed in architecture studies that is it moves around a particular building that is under construction it follows a pre mapped route through the construction site scans the progress of the building and compares it to the original design this helps the robot identify any mistakes and alterations that pop up as the digital design gets transformed into concrete and steel and ensures that details such as plumbing and electric conduits are correctly aligned by monitoring the construction process every week the architects can quickly see if and how the physical building is deviating from the plans and then adjust them to account for variations this is a disruptive technology spot will allow for any changes to be picked up almost instantly saving both time and money during the covid-19 pandemic the robot doctor was the spot to lower the medical experts contact with the virus the doctors partnered with boston dynamics to test spot to take the vitals of patients infected with covid-19 while this technology is not new the pandemic has given an opportunity to combine and test them the new papers from the researchers explain that the technology works and doctors can get a good sense of the patient's vitals how does it happen four cameras are mounted on the spot to gather data the cameras then track the patient's breathing rate by measuring the changing temperature of their mass oxygen saturation and such other vital parameters and that helps the researchers the doctors look at the patient condition and adopt an appropriate treatment methodology for the patient we have talked about muse q earlier as to its contribution in allowing step down icus to be created for people who have covid symptoms of different levels this system utilizing spot would obviously need an fda approval which means that extensive trials have to be conducted with more number of spots in more number of clinical settings and the spot itself can be expensive to be used in hospitals therefore there is a need to make it more affordable but at the same time more precise and flexible in terms of its measuring system but this is a move is a game changing move to bring robotics into medical diagnosis then we have the box moving robot sketch this helps the warehousing industry as we know warehousing is built on the premise that space is costly if first of all 
storing itself is a wasteful activity if you have to go by the japanese philosophy but then storing is essential and without storing buffers we cannot have a smooth supply chain operation covid-19 pandemic has demonstrated that when the countries were under lockdown it is the buffer stock that is available in the warehousing system that help the nations and societies deal with the economic lockdowns so with an intention to help the warehousing industry which is struggling to meet the rapidly increasing demand this sketch has been developed it is due for commercial deployment in 2022 this is the first commercial robot from boston dynamics and it is designed to tackle tasks like moving boxes truck unloading etc artificial intelligence in robotics is the unique selling proposition of boston dynamics these have been incorporated in spot spot score feature is the ability to navigate through hilly terrains something which a human being may not be able to do without challenging the heart and other body parts substantially a visual a solution firm started selling a special a version software for soft robots this a enhances the visual data that spot captures by combining thermal imaging gauss reading and leak detection scans to highlight abnormalities these ai upgrades have been a big help to their users the robot becomes much more of a reconnaissance gathering tool and actively aids its operators in making choices that could save them time money and lives with that kind of proprietary know-how technology and representative products Boston Dynamics should have been a hot selling company but Boston Dynamics has also been going through periodic ownership changes first of all in 2013 it was acquired by Alphabet Inc parent of Google for an unknown price why did Google do that because the parent Alphabet has got many new frontier technologies that are under its radar so google decided rather alphabet decided to acquire uh, boston dynamics however what boston dynamics presented probably was uh, too specific in terms of the mechanics the dynamics of motion so it was sold to a private equity investor Jap- japanese softbank group in 2017 and during this process also boston dynamics continued to upgrade its capabilities it acquired a silicon valley startup kinema systems for improving the motion dynamics of the robots in 2020 hyundai motor acquired an 80% stake in the company from softbank for approximately 1 billion dollars nearly softbank group retains about 20% through an affiliate this indicates that hyundai has seen significant potential for using robots of this nature in the automobile industry however maybe hyundai also could not derive the full success from this elon musk the ultimate in life technology developments brought boston dynamics to his uh, portfolio he bought ownership and both boston dynamics and tesla are now working on a new version of spot which will be exclusive for tesla owners and spacex travelers so the changing of hands did happen because it is a life changing technology that is under evolution some companies are able to stay with such developments whereas some companies are impatient in spite of their own life technology strategies but hopefully boston dynamics found its appropriate match and appropriate companion in terms of tesla and let's look forward to more life changing developments in the robotics field from tesla as well as from boston dynamics so life technology strategy can be seen by you through the example of boston dynamics that uh, that i have outlined these are the notes related to the topic if you wish you can please go through this thank you we have come to the end of this lecture thank you for your attention and we'll meet in the next lecture